What I'm going to present the material is in some sense cl classical provability logic and then the first, the modal half of it. Um, uh, there's a second half which would be, uh, well, still a part of the modal half to with Kripke semantics plus arithmetical semantics and that we will, uh, that, that will be postponed to a later talk. So that's the, that's the plan for today. Um, okay, yeah, so, so the, the talk is about provability logic. So you can see here the, well, three, three great persons, namely Kurt Gödel, Martin Loeb, and uh, Robert Solovey, who really uh, contributed central ideas to, uh, to provability logic. So here you see Martin Loeb, and it's really about his logic that we are going to talk today. So on, on the blackboard, you see uh, uh, Loeb's principle. So I have to tell you that the whole thing is fake because uh, I asked my daughter to put the formula on the blackboard on the real photo. It's uh, <laughs> the blackboard is empty. Okay, good. So, okay, so to understand uh, uh, the logic, so uh, I have to first to tell you that it's uh, what, that what we are looking at uh, um, uh, 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 at a modal propositional logic. So we have propositional variables, P0, et cetera. And then the language is given by uh, something as a propositional variable, falsity, true, negation, et cetera. But so the uh, important extra thing is that we have in this language a fixed point operator. So uh, d gamma pi of phi means uh, the pi fixed point of phi. So um, yeah, to, to understand what is going on, we need to know what substitution is. And so I apologized for um, boring you or, and also <laughs> for bothering you with some unpleasant details. So this really the piece about substitution that follows now. So I'm really going to run through it, but uh, I think the, uh, the students maybe will need to return to it to, to, to compute some examples and to really understand what's going on. Uh, so we write uh, phi and then p becomes psi for the result of substituting psi for p in phi, right? So that's the substitution. And, and you see an example there, if we substitute not r for q in p or q, we get p or not r. Uh, yeah, we also can have a simultaneous substitution. So where we substitute uh, psi zero for p zero, et cetera, p, uh, psi n minus one for p n minus one. And so here you see an example, right? So we substitute in p or q, and for p we substitute s or q, and for q not r. So then here q is replaced by not r, and p is re replaced by s or q. So important is, so, um, so it's simultaneous, right? And it's not sequential. So if we would first substitute S or Q for P and then Q for not R, we would also have a not R here, right? So the important thing is that uh, uh, it's simultaneous. And so uh, the substitution for not R does not operate on the result of this substitution. Uh, yeah, now here is a uh, kind of very important fact. So if we, we put two substitutions behind one another. So, so for, for example, if we first substitute psi zero for q zero and, and then have a simultaneous substitution of psi one for q one and psi two for q two, then you get, uh, uh, so the, well, then this has the same effect as one simultaneous substitution, but the point is that uh, for, um, instead of substituting psi zero, you first substitute, operate with this substitution on psi zero and then have the simultaneous substitution. Okay, so this is the, 
I think this is the most horrible point of the whole lecture, so I put it immediately at the beginning. Uh, so yeah, I, I think that uh, I invite the students to think about this so af after the talk. So uh, I, I put it down here more, more general, more generally, right? If we have two substitutions on different sets of variables, let's call them Q and R, then the result of substitute, if doing first sigma and then tau is the same as doing uh, what we get by first by composing sigma and tau and then taking the union of tau so so mm -hmm. i uh, let's see so i have uh, yeah i in the slides there is a sample computation and so you can try that out i i propose to skip it because it i think it's uh, <laughs> if we really try to go through it here it will be not so much a clarification as a kind of uh, obscurification but if you do it at home with pen and paper then you will see how it uh, how it works okay so now we are we have the the business of the substitutions out of the way and now we can really start so we have this fixed point operator in our modal language and so the meaning uh, uh, of uh, the gamma p, p phi is that this object is a fixed point of phi. So what you want is an axiom that tells us that the gamma p phi, if and only if uh, p, uh, the, uh, what you get by substituting the gamma p of phi in phi, right? So, so let's say that the gamma p of phi is alpha, so then a fixed point is simply uh, uh, something such that alpha if and only if phi where you substitute p for alpha right so the uh, so uh, for example if you take the liar uh, that's d gamma p not p so the fixed point of negation then that's something that's that's a, a formula lambda such that lambda if and only if not lambda and uh, as you see if you think about the liar paradox the fixed point equation leads to a contradiction. So this means that uh, we, we cannot really uh, allow all fixed points. However, there's many fixed point equations that do not need, lead to contradictions. For example, the, fixed, the Q fixed point of Q and not P doesn't lead to a contradiction. And the, uh, the P fixed point of not box P also doesn't lead to a contradiction. So, um, yeah, so the upshot is that we, we cannot simply define our logic adding all the fixed point equations. We need some restriction on uh, the, the class of formulas for which we allow equations. We need something, we need, uh, something that tells us which equations are allowed or, and which are not allowed. Now, uh, there are several choices for this, and we will zoom in on just one of those choices. So the other choice gives uh, also a, a great logic of fixed points to it, the mu calculus, but so we are not going to look at that. That, that will be in my uh, proof, theory, will be mentioned in my proofs, proof series seminar talk. Um, okay, so what we are going to look at are formulas that are modalized in P, so this means that all occurrences of P are in the scope of a box. We also say that P is guarded or boxed in phi. Okay, so, um, so here you can see uh, uh, examples of such uh, modalized fixed points. So the Gödel, the Gödel fixed point is the, the fixed point of the formula not, not box G. And the Henkin fixed point is the fixed point of the formula uh, box H, right? So, so the Gödel fixed point says, I am not provable. And the Henkin fixed point says, I am provable. So these are modalized formulas. And so they are allowed in our language. But on the other hand, the liar fixed point is not allowed. Well, we better not do that because then we would uh, be able to derive a contradiction. And also the, uh, the true stellar fixed point is uh, not allowed. So note that the true 
Teller fixed point is in fact completely okay. It has solutions and it does not lead to uh, a, a contradiction. And so, for example, in the other great logic of fixed points, the mu calculus, the true stellar fixed point is allowed. Okay, so now we know what the, uh, the language is and we have an explanation of what uh, the fixed point operator is supposed to do. And now we can uh, introduce our logic. And so the logic is the Loeb calculus. So it's a modal logic with, uh, in the language with just the modalized fixed points. And it's given by K4 plus the fixed point equation. So what is this? What, is, what are these the principles that we have? Well, it's first, of course, propositional logic. The thing is closed under modus ponens. So I'm not writing that down because these things are the default. Then it has the necessitation rule, which is uh, 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 also known in provability circles as the first loop condition. So that says that if phi is provable, then also box phi is provable. Then we have the second loop condition that says that if we have box phi and box phi implies psi, then we have box psi, right? So we can we can do modus ponens under the box. And so the, the thing that is most interesting is in fact the third loop condition, which says if we have box phi, then we have box box phi. So my next talk in the proof series seminar will in fact all about life without the third loop condition. So, so why is it there? That's a long story that I'm not going to tell here. So, uh, 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 this is really part of the traditional way of doing provability logic, and so it's uh, it's here. Uh, and then, of course, there's the fixed point uh, story. So we have uh, so the fixed point of phi is equivalent with phi of the fixed point of phi, right? So so the fixed point of phi really says I have the property phi. So that's the idea. But on, we only have these fixed points for the, when phi is modalized in P. Okay, so now this was uh, the first round. So what do we have now? We, we know that it's modal logic, we know the language, and we know, know the axioms. But so uh, the way I set things up is non-traditional because I have uh, extra fixed point operators in my modal language. But usually, it's uh, uh, in Loeb's logic, we don't do not have this. And so, what? So what I am going to explain to you is how we can go from the Loeb calculus to Loeb's logic, and uh, what I'm also going to explain is how we can go from Loeb's logic back to the Loeb calculus. So the the main the main message of this talk is that these two, the Loeb calculus and Loeb's logics are in some strong sense the same. Okay, so, um, so in the Loeb's calculus, we can prove Loeb's theorem. And so what is Loeb's, Loeb's theorem? Well, in fact, we, it, it, it's a kind of three-headed monster, so there are three Three things that are uh, uh, that 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 you can prove. The first is Loeb's rule, which says that if you can prove reflection for phi, then you can already prove phi. And um, so the uh, Loeb's principle is a kind of internalization of Loeb's rule. So that says that if we have box box phi implies phi, then we have box phi in the logic. And uh, uh, the strong Loeb's rule has allows you to uh, uh, add some extra assumptions to uh, Loeb's rule. So you can add assumptions of the form box chi, and you can uh, add assumptions of the form box dot rho. Did I tell you what box dot means? Let's see. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. Okay, yeah, so bo box dot 
is an abbreviation for box dot row is an abbreviation for row and box row, right? So it's really uh, uh, the conjunction of the formula with box of the formula. So that's the that's the idea. So the strength of slope rule really strengthens things because the uh, 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 Loeb's rule is a special case of it, but you can easily see that over over k, if you don't have four, then the strengthens Loeb rule is stronger than Loeb's rule and is as strong as Loeb's principle. So, uh, okay, so now I could, of course, prove all three of them, uh, but that would cost too much time. So I will just pick one and prove that. And the one that I will pick is Loeb's rule. Here we have Loeb's rule. Okay, so wh what we do is we pick a fixed point alpha, which is the fixed point of uh, box P implies phi. And so the P is fresh. So this means that it doesn't occur in phi, right? So the, we, we pick some P that is not in phi and we take this fixed point and call it alpha. Now suppose we have box phi implies phi. And now what follows is in fact the ce celebrated uh, reasoning from Loeb's paper. Uh, only of course in, the, in this modal representation it's uh, ultra short. So uh, uh, suppose, so we reason as follows in our theory, right? Suppose alpha. Now since alpha is a fixed point uh, of box P implies phi, so alpha is equivalent to box alpha implies phi, right? Since we ha also have this principle four or the third load condition, if we have box alpha implies phi, we also have box box alpha implies phi, right? Because box implies box box. So we have the conjunction of these things. Now, this thing is again equivalent to alpha. And so by standard model reasoning, the box box alpha implies phi is equivalent to box alpha. And so we let leave the box alpha implies phi here. So we have box alpha implies phi and box alpha. So that gives us box phi. Now we apply our assumption and we get phi. So we have derived alpha implies phi. And hence by necessitation or the first Loeb condition, we also have box alpha implies phi. But that's again by the fixed point equation, the same as that we have proved alpha. And now finally we combine this one and that one. And so we have uh, uh, the derivability of phi select hidden, right? So, and that's precisely, that's precisely what we wanted to prove. So that's here. Loeb's rule. Okay. Okay. Okay, now, now we have derived Loeb's principle and now we can, uh, 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 we have Loeb's logic, right? So we have derived, uh, for, well, we first have the first, the first three Loeb conditions that we already had. But we also have proved uh, Loeb's rule, and we also have from that uh, 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 Loeb's principle, and so we could add, for example, Loeb's principle. And so, um, yeah, so we have seen we have seen that we can uh, 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 GL, and. Um, so the Loeb, yeah, so the, oh, this should have been a C here. I see a typo. So we have seen that the Loeb calculus implies Loeb's logic. And we will show conversely that uh, all modalized fixed points are definable in Loeb's logic. So uh, uh, in fact, we can, we can go back from back and forth between Loeb's logic and uh, the, uh, the Loeb calculus. And so what we are going to show is that the Loeb calculus has fixed point elimination. So this is the kind of one of, is the real cent, a real central result of the ability logic, the uh, eliminability of fixed points. 
Okay, yeah, so there's a lot known, of course, about these axioms. And in fact, you can show that if you have the axioms like this, uh, uh, the third loop condition can, can in fact be omitted. It follows from loop's principle. Okay. Uh, yeah, so he, here you see, <laughs> I'm only giving here the definition of the box dot. Uh, so, uh, what I'm first going to show as an intermezzo before before we meet we 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 before we uh, move towards proving uh, uh, that we can define all fixed points in Loeb's logic, uh, I prove the uniqueness of fixed points. So the uniqueness of fixed points is a kind of is in some sense a triviality, but it's a, it's a enormously striking fact about uh, provability logic. And so what we need to, uh, uh, to prove it is substitution principles. And I'm, I give two, two substitution principles here. So substitution principles generally say that if two formulas are equivalent, then they are in intersubstitutable, right? Uh, okay, now it's, it's all very convenient to not always write phi, pi becomes psi, so there's this, this, this big notation, but uh, uh, so I, I will also write phi, psi for, for this. Of course, then you have to know what, what p, what the intended p is, right? So if we have a contextually given intended variable p, then uh, we, we write phi of psi for the result of substituting psi for p and phi. Okay, the substitution principles now take the following forms. So if uh, we have box dot phi if and only if psi, so if they're equivalent in some strong sense, then in any formula chi we can replace always phi by psi and vice versa, right? So that's, that's a, a, a clear principle. And of course you would expect that, right? So because the, uh, the, the box dot means in some sense, so given that, that, that phi and psi are always the same, and, uh, or if you think in terms of Kripke models that we are not treating here, that they're, that, that they're the same in all nodes, e bigger or equal than the given node. And of course then, uh, uh, so they will express the same proposition in some sense. And so then they're of course intersubstitutable. Yeah, so more interesting is the next one that says that if phi and psi are necessarily or provably equivalent, then we may substitution if chi is modalized in P, right? So now, so the, um, so if, if you're inside the box, if things are equivalent inside the box, of course, the uh, logic cannot see what happens outside of the box. But uh, the, the demand that P is modalized really takes care of that because the phi and the psi will also always occur inside the box and hence we do have the, the substitution principle. Of course, the, these principles can be proved by inductions uh, on chi, so I'm not going to do that, but uh, it's a kind of trivial, trivial thing. So you just have to sit down and and, 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 and do it. And now we have the, uh, we can prove the uh, famous uh, fixed point principle by uh, De Jong, Sambin and Bernardi. Um, and this fixed point principle tells us that if box dot, so if, if we have that P is equivalent to phi, then P is equivalent to the fixed point of phi. So that's the uh, uh, so that's that's the uniqueness, right? Because it tells us so that so 
the left hand side of the equivalence um, the left hand side of the equivalence tells us that p is a fixed point and uh, the, the right hand side of the equivalence tells us that p is the definite the fixed point that is given by definition so the the, the fixed point that is is the d gamma fixed point and so that tells us that any fixed point is, in a strong sense, the same as the d gamma fixed point. So how uh, does this work? Uh, well, again, suppose alpha is the, the, the fixed point of phi. So now then let's assume box dot. So we want to prove uh, uh, we want to, so what we are going to do is we want to prove from uh, uh, P, if and only a phi in the strong sense, so the box dotted sense, then we have uh, uh, P, if and only if alpha in the box dotted sense. But what we first are going to prove that we have P, if and only if alpha. And to do that, we use Loeb's, the strengths and Loeb rule. So we may use this as an assumption, and we want to prove that this implies this. So why is that the case? Now suppose P, if and only if alpha, then we do have uh, phi if and only if phi alpha. So why is that the case? Well, because P is guarded in phi, right? So what we are using is the second, the second substitution principle. So P is under the box equivalent to alpha. So, uh, so this is phi of P. And so we may replace P by alpha. So we have P if and only if uh, uh, phi alpha. Now phi is, is equivalent to P. So this one, phi here, we can replace by P. And, uh, and also for alpha, we have the fixed point equation that's an axiom, so phi alpha is equivalent to alpha. So we have from phi if and only if phi alpha, we have p if and only if alpha. So now by the strong Loeb rule, we may drop the antecedent here. And so we get box dot p if and only if phi, then p if and only if alpha. Okay, so now we have this. Uh, okay, now it's an exercise in modal logic. It's an, a simple exercise in modal logic to show that uh, uh, if we have box dot p and f p if and only if phi then this, then we also have box dot implies box dot that, right? So that's simply an exercise in K4 or or in, in, in basic modal logic plus uh, the third uh, uh, load condition. So that's, that's simple. And now, so in the other direction, if we have box dot P if and only if alpha, now then because we have the fixed point, we also have box dot alpha if and only if phi alpha. And so by the fixed point equation, we get this, right? So that's also a, 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 an elementary exercise in modal logic, and I would uh, want to ask the students to try to do that at home. It's, uh, it's uh, quite simple. Okay, maybe this is a good point to see whether there are questions. Uh, so how can we, how can we do that? Jong, can you let people ask questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyone in TL, just you can ask any question you have in mind about what you have told, uh, told about. Yeah. 
uh, maybe uh, anyway. Uh, anyone? Okay. Uh, um, it yeah, you know, it, it cannot be completely clear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we have a different background. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, in your language, you you have the operator for the fixed point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think maybe a natural question is that uh, uh, is that uh, for any formula we have the where we have this fixed point, or yeah. we have some kind of theorem which tells us that uh, under which condition uh, for given formula we have the fixed point. Or just say that uh, uh, the function from phi to the fixed point of phi, whether it is a total function. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's not it's not a total function because we restrict. Yeah, of course you can set set, the, set it up the language. You can set up the language in two ways, right? We could have all fixed points in the language, and then only the fixed point axioms for the for the modalized case. But I think it's neater to simply restrict the language to the modalized fixed points, right? So let me just go back to the definition of modalized. Modalized, right? So this means that P only occurs in, in safe places, right? So you should, so, so you, yeah, you could think maybe of, of the power of taking fixed points as something extremely dangerous, right? Fixed points can, blow up the world, right? So if we have uh, the liar paradox, so the so this naked negation here, so uh, it's, it's an explosive thing, it's dangerous. It's, as soon as you have the liar, then your, your language gets inconsistent. So we want safety. And so we, it, it's like kind of experiments, you can only do them in safe, safe spaces with, with walls around them. And so we ask that the, uh, that the places where the, the fixed point variable occurs are all guarded or boxed. So that's, the, that's, the, uh, that's our um, restriction. And so the, yeah, so the basic idea is uh, we only have fixed, fixed points in the language for the modalized formulas. Yeah, it's a bit, if you look here at this definition of the language, it's, uh, it's extremely annoying, but you can annoying, but you cannot give a nice Bacchus Nauer style definition of the, the language with these restricted fixed points. So, so my style of doing it is simply saying, step one, we have the full language also with the wrong fixed point, and now we simply omit all the fixed points of uh, of non-modalized formulas in a iterated way. So that's the that's that's the way I set it up, but it's yeah, it's a little bit annoying that no nice recursive definition of the language is possible. Of course, with the theorem that I'm going to explain to you soon, we, we, we can get around that problem and, and and give a nice definition of the fixed point, but that really demands uh, uh, an advanced theorem. Okay, so we we. We always work on the modernized formula. So in this case, uh, we always have the fixed point for the modernized formula. Yeah, so we have only the fixed point. Yeah, so also in the language. So I restrict the language to, to this, right? So it's, it's more than restricting the logic. But I think in, in principle, it doesn't really make much difference. But uh, so I think it's nicer. It's, it's more elegant to have the fixed point just for the modernized case. Oh, OK. Okay. Uh, could you say more about uh, the principle SLR? Just uh, SLR, maybe uh, the uh, yeah the previous previous several page. Uh, Sorry, the, the, it should have been LC, right? So the uh, 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 SLR uh, is about uh, the loops uh, calculus. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This SLR. Uh, so. Um, so this, this this kind of rule is arbitrary. I right? just know. Uh, yes, it's, it's, it's a bit. Anyway, uh, this principle is a, it seems very strong. It's, this kind of rule and the files are the arbitrary formula, right? 
Yes, yes. Here, here the file, because you look, so the, the, the fixed point formula that we are using is this, right? So phi can be completely arbitrary because it, this is going to be modalized, right? It's box P implies phi. So that's a, it's an, a modalized formula. So uh, yes, so the, the, it's completely, yeah. So this is really extremely uh, surprising. And if you think of provability logic as a logic of knowledge, so then you see that it's it's a, a logic of an extremely skeptical knowledge, right? So, so that namely, whenever you think that uh, the grounds, the, whenever you think that if you think that something is true, then it's true. Then you're all that's only on the basis of the fact that you already think it's true. So it's a kind of extreme extreme doubt about your uh, cognitive powers that in some sense is expressed by uh, these uh, principles. So uh, uh, in some sense, in a very strong way, you don't know reflection for yourself. <laughs> you, you're a very irreflective person in some sense, uh, according to Loeb's principle and Loeb's rule. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's very surprising. But uh, uh, yeah, I've proved that it, it follows from the fixed point equations, right? In the modalized case. Okay, let us proceed. So I went a bit faster than I thought. So now we can try to do this quite slowly. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Now, so we want to move back, so we we want to move back from the Loeb calculus to Loeb's, uh, from, sorry, we want to move from Loeb's logic to the Loeb calculus, but what I'm going to do is to move backwards. So I will start with the Loeb calculus and then prove, prove to you that, uh, that not, uh, uh, I will prove to you that not all fixed points are needed, right? We do not need all modalized fixed points. I will first show you that uh, we only need fixed points of a very special form. And then I also will, and in the second step, I will show you that we can also throw the fixed points of this special form away. And uh, so, yeah, to do that, I want to prove to you uh, the, the multiple fixed points theorem. So, uh, yeah, so if you go back to uh, high school, you had algebra, you first uh, learned to solve linear equations, and then you learned to solve systems of linear equations. So, uh, um, uh, and th that was one step up, right? But uh, uh, and, and the linear equations and the systems of linear equations also uh, there were certain conditions for them to have a solution, right? There was it's not always uh, uh, a solution, and uh, so uh, so uh, uh, in the n by n case, of course, the, the determinant should not be zero in algebra, right? So now now. In the Loeb calculus, we have simply stipulated that we can solve all modalized fixed points, right? So for systems of one equation, we simply stipulated we can solve it, right? So we, we didn't do any work, but we simply said, uh, let there be a fixed point. Um, good. So now I want to show that given a system that if we have a system of equations, then we can also solve it. But this is not completely general. We need to have some condition. And uh, uh, this, this condition is in some sense that uh, the, the, the system will be uh, in some sense modalized or in some sense guarded. Um, and so uh, the condition that we have works as follows. So look, look at the system, right? And so now uh, we have, for example, P0 if and only if phi zero. Um, and so now we are going to assign 
to the system a graph. So what the nodes of the graphs are simply the fixed point variables. That there may be more variables than the fixed point variables, so they don't play a role in this graph. They're just uh, uh, the variables that we have to solve. Step one. So now, how do, what, does the, what are the arrows in the graph? Well, it's very simple. If in phi zero, for example, there is a free occurrence of P3, where, and that is not guarded, then we have an arrow, if and only if, right? So we, we draw arrows from P0 to all PI such that PI has a non-guarded occurrence in phi zero and the same for phi one and etc. Uh, and so, um, and we say that uh, E is guarded, yeah, and I now realize suddenly that it could better be called modalized, that would be more consistent. Uh, so E is guarded or modalized if this graph doesn't have cycles. So a cycle means simply that you can run in a circle in the graph, right? So that should be excluded. If the gra graph is acyclic, then uh, uh, we have it. So in, in the computer science literature, these things are called DAGs, di directed acyclic graphs. And so as soon as you have that, uh, if, if, if the graph is acyclic, then the equations have a, a unique solution. And the, in this solution, of course, we only have the variables from the phi i and the, the, the fixed point variables drop out, right? So the solutions are, may have still free variables, but not the fixed point variables have gone. So here, so here we see the business of the associated graph. Uh, yeah, I made the picture with extremely old fashioned technology, namely a pen and paper. Uh, so look at the following system. So P if and only if not Q and R, Q if and only if box P and box R, uh, R if and only if Q and S, and then, um, okay, so the fixed point variables are P, Q, and R, right? So the graph will be have nodes P, Q, and R. So there's also a variable S, but it's not a fixed point variable, so it will not occur in the, as a node in the graph. Now, if you look at the first equation, it shows that we can go from, that Q occurs freely and R occurs freely. So we have arrows from P to Q and to R. So if you look at Q, so all occurrences of fixed point variables on, in the, on the right hand side are guarded. So there's no arrows going out from Q, right? Q is a dead end in the graph. What about R? Well, R, Q occurs free in Q and S, and it's a fixed point variable. So we have from R, we have an arrow to Q. We do not have an arrow from R to S because S is simply not a fixed point variable. So it doesn't, it, it's just there, it doesn't do any work. And what we see here is that the graph, the associated graph is non-cyclic because there's no way you can travel from P to P or from R to R or from Q to Q following the arrows, right? So there's no, there are no cycles here. And so this means that this system has a solution. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, so the proof of this is by induction on N, now let me just think what to do. Wait, wait a small moment. Um, multiple fixed points. Yeah, okay, maybe we run through the, the proof and then we have a five minute break. Um, okay, now so to prove that uh, we have multiple fixed points, so Consider any system, guarded system of these fixed point equations. 
And so we have P0 if and only if phi 0, etc., etc. And so we will show that this system has a solution. So now the case of N is 1 is trivial, right? So if this if 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 we just have P0 if and only if phi 0, we can solve it because then since we have no cycles, P0 can only occur guarded in phi. And so we have uh, 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 the loop calculus really provides a fixed point and so the, we are there, it's trivial. Um, okay, now, uh, Let's suppose that so that n is uh, uh, bigger than one, and so now what we first do is that we solve the first equation, right? We define, we take beta, the solution of the first equation. Equation. So now, since the whole system is guarded, specifically there are no loops on p zero in the graph, and so it follows that. Uh, 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 P0 will only occur in phi0 uh, 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 in a guarded way, and so we can indeed take this fixed point, right? Phi, P0 is guarded in phi0. Phi um, okay, now we form a, a new system, so uh, namely we consider all the variables P1 to Pn minus one. And we consider the system that we get by first substituting beta for the P0, right? So note that P0 is not going to be, be in beta, right? It's not going to be free in beta. And so it really will disappear as a free variable after substituting uh, beta in the phi i's. So the phi i's with beta substituted through phi zero will only have of the fixed point variables p1 to pn minus one free. And so we have p1 if and only if phi one, p0 becomes beta, p2 if and only if phi two, p0 becomes beta, etc. Okay, now can we solve the first question to ask is can we solve this system? So, uh, and the answer is yes, we can. And so how do we know this? So to, to, to know that we should know what the graph of this is. And so, so what happens? So we, we start of course with the graph of the original system. And uh, what we get in, in the graph of the new system is of course that we remove the node P0. But I, the whole thing is, of course, since we substitute P0 uh, uh, beta for uh, uh, P0, so in beta we, have, we will have all free, vari free variables that we had in phi 0 minus P0. So uh, uh, the substitution of beta will really uh, give us that we have uh, um, if, let's see what happens. So we, we go from PI, we, we had an arrow from PI to P0, for example. Uh, so that means that P0 would have an un unguarded occurrence in, uh, uh, in phi I. Um, uh, and so this P0 disappears, but all things that uh, from, for which we had arrows from P0 to, uh, uh, to the elements of phi0, so the, the piece that was based on phi0 of the graph is now substituted. And so what you get is that we eliminate the things, but if we had an arrow from pi to p0 to pj, that would result in replacing it by pi to pj. 
right? So the I think the it would have been very pleasant now to do this <laughs> to show to you this to you on the blackboard. Uh, um, yeah, right. Well, yeah. So the whole thing is so in fact. So what we substitute is almost phi zero, right? So it's almost phi zero. It's just that p zero is removed. And so all the variables that unequal to p zero that occur non-guarded in phi zero are now uh, suddenly occur in the result of the substitution. And so we have arrows from pi i to those, right? So first we had an arrow from pi i to p zero, and we did have arrows from p zero to p j, but that now these, this p j has an unguarded occurrence after the substitution, and so we have the, this arrow. So the whole point is uh, the, uh, the operation that we have is simply uh, uh, removing p0 from the graph. And then uh, if, if we had a, a two-step arrow from via p0, then you simply omit it, but connect the two, the two arrows that you orig originally had. And it's easy to see that this operation of extracting p0 does not create new circles and uh, new cycles, and we are we are there. So the, the, the system has a solution. Okay, now let the unique solution uh, be uh, uh, of the, the new system. So that's the system of pi if and only if phi i p0 becomes beta. That suppose that solution is alpha one to alpha n minus one, right? So note that in these alphas, none of the variables will occur. None of the p zero, p one, p right there solutions. Now, um, yeah. So that could suppose the substitution where I substitute alpha one for p one, alpha n minus one for p n minus one, and uh, so we define alpha zero as the result of taking beta. So let's go back. So what was beta? Uh, beta was the fixed point of phi zero, guaranteed by the Loeb calculus. Uh, fixed point, uh, yeah, right. So and now in that fixed point, we substitute. So in this beta, of course, we still had the variables p1 to pn minus 1. So, and that those we replace by the solutions alpha 1 to alpha minus 1. And now we take the, the substitution that sends p0 to alpha 0, and then is this fair for, for the rest the same as sigma. So, alpha 1, p1 to alpha 1, etc. Okay, now. Um, Okay, so now what happens? Well, look here. Alpha zero is by definition beta of sigma, right? And now the beta, let's go back to see what beta was. Beta is the fixed point of phi zero. So beta is equivalent to phi zero and then beta substituted in it, right? And so now we use a modal a modal law that tells us that uh, if two things are provably equivalent, then the results of substitution of whatever in those things is also provably equivalent, right? That's that's in fact the schematicity of the logic, right? So and and, and in fact the Loeb calculus does have this desired schematicity. So uh, so that's that step. But now the whole thing is, so now we have first one substitution and then we have a simultaneous substitution and then you get the, the whole thing, right? So, so if we first substitute beta for P0 and then do sigma, that's the same thing that if we do simultaneously a substitution of beta where we apply sigma to beta, and simultaneously the rest of sigma, right? So remember that sigma 
was a substitution for p1 to pn minus 1. So the, uh, so the, the, the subsequent substitutions can be translated to a simultaneous one. But if you look at this one, so if you uh, look through the slitted eyes, well, close your eyes a little bit, and you will see that this is just tau, right? So it, because it tau sends P0 to alpha zero, where alpha zero is beta sigma, and then the rest is, it's for the rest, it's like sigma, right? So that's, this is really, this is really tau. And so it's alpha zero, if and only if phi zero tau. But that's precisely the fixed point, the fixed point equation for alpha zero. So what about alpha i? Well, alpha i is the same thing as uh, uh, the same, uh, the same thing as uh, phi. So the, it's, it's a solution of the system of equations. Phi p0 becomes beta. So it's phi i p0 becomes beta and then we substitute the solution sigma. But now look, uh, we are immediately back at the same place at, as in the same, as in the previous system. So this really here is tau. So that we can, we already made this step, translating this, the subsequent substitutions here to tau. So uh, alpha i is if, if and only a phi i of tau. And so there we, there you see it, we have the, uh, the fixed point equations. So summarizing, so what did we prove? That if we have a system of equations like this, and if the gr its graph is not cyclic, if, 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 yeah, if the graph, graph is acyclic, so, uh, so if the system is guarded, then, um, then the system has a solution. So that, that's what we, what we proved. And uh, these solutions are in, in some sense uh, 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 obtained, of course, by taking, taking so the operations of to, to make these solutions is taking fixed points and substituting things, right? So that's the, that's the, uh, the whole way it's going to do. Okay, so now I propose that we have a five, five or six minute, oh well, maybe, maybe first again questions. Dion, are uh, there question, questions about this part? Uh, anyone have any question or comment for this part? Yeah, I, I think, uh, yeah, this proof is very nice. Uh, Maybe we need uh, to sit down uh, for more thought on this uh, on this proof. Um, yeah, some people may not are uh, very clear about what are uh, uh, what what are you, you are what are you going to prove. Yeah, so you, you want to show that if this graph is a a cyclic, um, a cyclic and then this uh, equation system has the solution. Um, yeah. So but. but so the, the, yeah, the, graph, yeah. the graph is really uh, says that the determinant is non-zero in some sense, right? It's it's uh, it's the the acyclicity of the graph is the sufficient condition for the solvability of the system. In fact, it's not. In fact, it's not a necessary condition. There's 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 more systems of equations solvable than given by the theorem, but. Um, uh, I think still it's uh, we, we're doing well. A, lo a lot of a lot of systems of equations are solvable, right? In case in case of the determinant, it was a necessary. In algebra, it, we we gave a necessary and, and sufficient condition for solvability. So this this is just sufficient. Uh, so and because I already gave this example of the the true stellar, right? So pi if and only if pi or P0, if and only if P0 is solvable, right? It has solutions true and it has solution falsity. Uh, so that's, 
uh, or, or well, no, and any closed formula in the language will be a solution of P if and only if P. But uh, so th that solution is not going to be given by this methodology because we, it, it, this here we really want that things are eventually guarded. Um, okay, in my talk in the seminar, I, I will say a little bit more about uh, this, okay. th these further cases. Um, yeah, but in fact, so the, uh, yeah, I have, don't have the illusion that you really, so especially this, right? So I think the students really sh should work, you really should work through a few examples to see this. So the, so the, uh, the, the proof here, as, so this is really the algorithm, right? Uh, uh, so the proof here really, the proof here really is an algorithm to, to solve it and you really can do that by, uh, by hand. So the, the algorithm is, um, I think, slightly, so as far, I'm not aware that people ever thought about the uh, complexity of this. So uh, I think in the end, it's probably ex exponential time or something, or, or, or maybe uh, P space. So uh, uh, it's not, it, it, it's not, it's not a good algorithm, but you can, because, but I think the, the thing here is that at each point we simply solve one equation, right? So the, the crucial step is here and then in the next system we solve one equation and then etc. So, but you, you can uh, apply a divide and conquer algorithm there and so uh, yeah, I still don't know whether, whether that's, so it would be interesting to see whether that's really, uh, whether that could be made P time. So um, it's, that's, that's, I'm not completely sure of that, but uh, uh, it's probably a, an hour work to really see what's, what's going on there. Okay, uh, the audience, uh, CDC has a question and he just said the message, he asked, uh, uh, is there always a fixed point for modelized formulas in system S4 or in, or in system GL? Sorry, can you repeat the question again? Uh, yeah, you, you can also see the this question in the message. Uh, we have this chat message. He asked, is there always a fixed point for modelized formulas in system S4 or in system GL? Yeah, so in, in S4, of course, uh, uh, so if as soon as you have reflection, the whole thing explodes, right? Because uh, 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 if we have reflection, then we can prove not box falsity, and then by Loeb's rule we can prove falsity. So uh, so if if you add modelized fixed points to S four, the the things goes the thing goes dramatically wrong. So, uh, uh, so yeah, you you cannot. Of course, the, the whole algorithm, everything works uh, uh, for S four. But so S four is would really be uh, adding the reflection principle to the Loeb calculus, and so that yeah, that that would lead to inconsistency, right? So the the, the Loeb's logic is in some sense anti-reflexive. You don't want reflection. So yeah, so the, for S4 it, it doesn't work, and so you, uh, yeah, you 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 uh, have to do something else. So look at different a different class of fixed points, so not not the modelized ones. Okay, uh, is there clear for uh, CVC? And uh... Anyway, uh, if you have a question, you can also send the message. Okay. Yeah, you you can and you can send me uh, an email also if you want uh, later after the talk. I uh, can try to answer things. Okay, then I propose to have a five minute break or something, and then we can proceed. Okay, sure, that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> we'll take a break and then we we'll come back. Yeah, we can come back at uh, uh, um, Eight, uh, eight thirteen. Okay, five minute. Okay, five minute break. 
Okay. Yeah, five minute breaks. Yeah. Yeah, for me that's fifteen. Oh well, yeah. Okay. Anyway, oh, fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. Yeah, but it's uh, maybe my watch is not completely right. Okay. I'll get something to drink. <laughs> okay. Okay, just uh, one uh, announcement. Yeah, if you have any question or comment, you can open your audio. Uh, if you don't want to use audio, you can also send a message. Okay, that's definitely okay. Okay, okay. <clears throat> okay, full screen right. So, so find the uh, find the solution or this question is not a polyminia polyminia time question. Yeah. yeah so the, at least the, the, so I'm I'm pretty sure. So uh, I didn't really prove a lower bound, but if you think about what's going on, I'm pretty sure that this is can the algorithm as stated is certainly not p time. But uh, I'm not. Yeah. So the whole thing is I'm not convinced that by being a somewhat more clever that we cannot improve it uh, a lot right so the so uh, 
uh, so if if you have your system of equations, so first divide it in two, and then solve the first half and the second half, and the, for the first half, <laughs> solve the first half of that and the second half of that, etc. Right? So the divide and conquer. So that that's probably, but I'm not sure that someone should have to do the computations. It's probably much more efficient to. Uh, so to uh, to take these things in blocks. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> okay, we are ready. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So now, so, so, what? Let's go back. So, what what are we doing, right? I want to go from Loeb's logic to the Loeb's Loeb calculus, uh, and to do that, I want to simplify the the fixed points we are using. But to do the simplification in a pleasant way, it's uh, 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 one needs a kind of powerful tool, and this powerful tool is the multiple fixed point theorem. So as soon as we have this uh, powerful tool, the whole thing, uh, the, sim the, 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 the simplifications become uh, uh, simple. <laughs> and so, uh, so if you look in the provability logic literature, you, you see that um, a lot of what of the proof that I'm giving is simply there, but people didn't connect it to the multiple fixed point theorem. And so I think that's, that's in some sense new. So not, none of the moves you are looking at is new, but uh, <laughs> the combination of the moves is a kind of uh, pleasant idea. Okay, so uh, so consider phi that is modelized in P, right? And so uh, we know that that has a, a, a solution, of course. Uh, but I want, suppose that we only are allowed to uh, uh, take fixed points of the form, a formula of the form box psi, right? So suppose that we don't have, we have far, we allow ourselves far less, um, yeah, suppose we allow ourselves far less fixed points than we, had until now, and that we do not have all modelized fixed point, but only fixed points where we have uh, uh, things of the form box psi. And so what I'm going to show is that we can reduce uh, uh, that, that as soon as we have the fixed points of the, for the form box psi, then we can also compute all modelized fixed points. And so, uh, and the idea is, to compute the fixed point for phi in a different way. Okay, so now uh, we, we do the following, right? So um, consider phi. And now if you think about phi, right? So the P is supposed to be, phi is to be supposed to be modelized in P, right? So this means that P only occurs freely in the scope of a box. Now, um, if you think about the formula, right? So, so look, zoom in in your thoughts uh, on p, some occurrence of p in the formula. Now you know if you go to larger and larger surrounding formulas, and you know that at some point you will hit a boxed formula. And so, uh, what we can do, of course, is um, well, in some sense, take all these box formulas in which P occurs out. So that is not a unique thing, right? So P can occur, the same occurrence of P can be in, in several box formulas. And so the, we, we could make different choices, but for every occurrence, we can find uh, uh, a formula box psi such that the occurrence occurs in that, right? And so 
if you look at all occurrences, so then we can find subformulas of box psi zero to box psi n minus one for some psi zero, psi zero to psi n minus one, such that phi is uh, the result of substituting uh, the box the box psi i for the q uh, for q i in phi tilde. Uh, and P does not occur in phi tilde, right? So the idea, so we replace, okay, the re, so the idea is as follows. Start with phi. Now for each occurrence, we can find uh, 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 a subformula of the form box psi i in which this occurrence of P is. Now, what we do is to replace such subformulas by in phi by qi. And so you obtain a formula in which we have of the form phi tilde q0 to qn minus one, in which p doesn't occur anymore. But if you put the box psi i back, then you get again phi, right? So that's, so we analyze phi into into those components that contain P. And we do that, of course, in a non-overlapping way. So the, uh, uh, so the, um, we, uh, of course, if, if P occurs twice in psi zero, then we, we uh, do not take a, any component for <laughs> a different component for the second occurrence in psi zero, right? So you, but you can do this, it, you can clearly do this if you think about what the formula looks like. And now we look at the following system of equations. So we do something completely crazy. So it, I take the system of equations, P if and only if phi, Q zero if and only if box psi zero, Q n minus one if and only if psi n minus one. So now if, if I solve, suppose you solve that system, right? So <laughs> what does it look like? Well, uh, well, it simply looks like this. So we uh, uh, solve, uh, we first solve a P if and only a phi, well, Remember that there are no Q's in phi, so that's it's simply the the fixed point of phi that we are computing. And so, uh, and what what is the solution for the QI's? Well, remember there are no QI's in the psi j, so the, the psi j the psi only uh, have the p as a relevant fixed point variable, but not the Q's. So the, what what we get is that the Q's I's are simply box psi I, but then, and then the fixed point of phi substituted, right? So nothing interesting happens when we compute it like this. But now look at the second system. Uh, it's E1. So now we say that uh, P if and only if phi and Q zero if and only if box psi zero and q n minus one if and only if box psi n minus one. Now if you think about this, these systems are equivalent because uh, 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 in the solution we will have the q the q i equivalent with the box c the box psi i and so uh, so this phi here is the result of substituting these things in phi tilde. And so the solutions of this system must be the same as the solution of this one, right? So the, it's the E1 is simply a different way of writing down the same system. And so uh, 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 it, it has to have the same solutions, right? So that by, by by simple, again, by the, the, the principles of substitution, in fact. Um, okay. Um, 
So what happens? Now the, the miracle is, of course, if we solve the second system, something interesting happens. First, we, we try to solve P if and only if phi tilde. Well, if this was a real, if I really would be there and I would be talking to you, I would ask people what is the solution of, of this first equation. And the, the answer is, it's phi tilde itself, right? Because no, no P occurs here. So the, uh, the, um, the solution is trivial. So, the, so the, the nothing happens. The, the, it's a degenerate case because the fixed point variable does not occur here. And so that taking the fixed point has no effect. So the solution of the first equation is this. Now, uh, so what, what we have now to do is to substitute, uh, if you think about the algorithm, we substitute this for P, phi, phi tilde for P in the QIs and then solve these things, right, in steps. First we solve this, then we solve the second. But now you see that we are only solving, uh, we are only solving equations of the form uh, QI if and only if box something, right? So the so we are only solving equations of a very specific form, and that's precisely what we need, right? So so the first system has as the solution of the first simply the fixed point of phi, and the second uh, system has as a solution phi tilde, and then the solutions of the QIs, name, namely let's say alpha zero to alpha n minus one as a solution for P. Now, and here the alpha i are all, if you follow the algorithm, simply of the form d gamma q i box eta i for some eta, right? So these eta i's are going to be substitution instances of the psi i's. So that's a, uh, that's the whole. That's the whole trick, right? So, uh, uh, so our so alpha zero star and alpha one star are equivalent because they're the unique fixed point uh, of phi, right? Or you could also say, well, there <laughs> we are following an equivalent solution procedure, procedure. But the computations, the algorithm that we apply is different. The one gives us directly the fixed point of phi, and the other uh, gives us the fixed point of phi as uh, an analyzed thing, so it's phi tilde, and then uh, the fix, uh, fixed points of this system of equations, well, with the phi tilde substituted. And so uh, uh, what we have now shown is uh, something, uh, yeah, somewhat miraculous, namely and, and without any effort because we already did all the work in solving the uh, the uh, in improving the multiple fixed point lemma uh, that uh, uh, to solve a modalized equation it's to enough to solve equations of this form so box I, let's so call those boxed equations right so uh, I only have to solve the boxed equations. And um, uh, yeah, and there we are. And so what we see, if you think about it, um, of course you have to, I'm now cheating a little bit, right? We have to, we have to check whether we didn't secretly use things about that involve complicated fixed points. So, we, but uh, uh, if, if you think about the argument, you will see that we didn't use anything untoward. So the argument is straightforward. So the, this, the computation of the fixed point of phi using fixed point of this simple form can be done in, in the system that only has fixed points of this form, uh, d gamma q of box eta. And so we have reduced the, uh, uh, the loop calculus to a simpler one, namely with fixed point of this form. So note that fixed point of this form can be 
is, are much simpler than modalized fixed points and we, we actually can give uh, an, a nice recursive definition of the language, etc., cetera, to, uh, to, uh, uh, for this case. Okay, so that's, uh, uh, that's the first step. Okay, and so that's, that's really great, right? So we have, we have much simpler fixed points to work with, but now the, uh, yeah, so the, the interesting thing is so that this principle four or the third loop condition or box implies box box does not really play a big role in what we are doing here. But now in the second round, uh, this principle four or, or L3 or box implies box box will play a big role because now we will prove that we can solve, uh, fit, we can explicitly solve fixed points of this form. So how does that work? Okay, so now we look at this fixed point and now I claim so again, so remember our convention, right? I, I declare P to be the designated variable. So this, this thing means uh, the result of substituting true for P in box psi, or if you want in psi, it's, it's the same. So the, uh, uh, okay. And now I will prove that this here is equivalent to this fixed point. So how does that go? Uh, okay, we work in the loop calculus. And so the first one is simple. Suppose box psi of true. Then we have box psi of true. And now we use four or the third loop condition. So if we have this, of course, this also implies this. But this thing here is uh, the same as that box psi two is equivalent to true, right? It's provably equivalence. Uh, it's provably equivalence of this thing to true. And now we use this, the second substitution principle. So if we have box, so now, uh, uh, so if you look at box psi of P, then box psi of true, the result of substituting true will be equivalent to the result of substituting box of psi of true. So we have box of psi of box of psi of true, right? So we simply replace the true here by box of psi of true, right? So that's, that's one half of the fixed point equation, right? So this implies this implies to itself. Yeah, so it's, 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 it's magic, I know. It's, <laughs> it's, so I didn't invent this, right? So a long, long time ago, uh, Dick de Jong and uh, independently Giovanni Sambin uh, invented this argument. So, uh, okay, here we are, first step. Now the second step, then we have to go back from box, box psi, box psi, box psi true to box psi true, right? We have to move back. But how on earth could you do that? And in fact, you cannot do it unless you have a little bit of help from a friend. And this friend is uh, box, box psi true. And um, so let's first prove what we want. So the, 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 the other direction of the fixed point equation under this assumption, right? So this is the helping hand from a friend that helps you get there. Uh, so suppose that we have box, box psi, box psi true. Then of course we can repeat this. And this thing here gives us box true if and only if box psi true, right? So that's the same thing as what we said, what we saw here at, in the first equation. So this one gives us this. But now you see we have an equivalence under the box and that means that we can replace this one by true. So that gives us box psi true. 
So if we have this help in hand, we can uh, have box side. But now, um, uh, what we see, so if, if we flip this around, we can see that from box side, box side true, we have derived box, box side true implies box side true, right? So, uh, so and that, that gives, that is uh, again the strength of Slotlerk's rule, right? So if, if we move this one in front and this one here, you get box, box implies box. So there we can apply Lerb's rule. So then we have that box, box side, box side true implies box side true, right? So it's, uh, yeah, so we first do it in this order. And then we, so it, it's really, this is an antecedent and this is an antecedent. We simply flip them around and then we can apply the strengths and slope rule on, on box, box side true implies box side true. So then we may omit the helping hand. So, so the, yeah, it's a sad thing, right? So it has helped and now we discard it at the end as uh, thanks. And, uh, yeah, so by Loeb's rule, we are done. And so um, what we have is box side true implies box side, box side true. And we have box side, box side true implies box side true. And so we have box side true if and only if box side, box side true. And so we have proven that this is a fixed point. Since the fixed points are unique, this is the, the in fact, the unique fixed point that we have calculated. Right, so the, Miraculous thing is so we, we did calculate um, we did calculate the the fixed points of this form. And so that's the second step, right? So the first step, reduction to fixed points of the form D gamma box psi. And then the second step, reduction of fixed points of the form D gamma box psi to box side to to a very simple form box side true so right this is really the kind of miraculous argument so that's uh, yeah it's it's magic so you you can understand it by following the steps but uh, for me at least the whole argument always had the still retains its feeling of of magic even if it's completely understandable and so uh, in those two steps you can see that we can really so if we, even if we don't have the D gamma operator, we can all define all fixed points. And so that's the De Jong sambin theorem, right? So the original De Jong sambin theorem says, in Loeb's logic, we can define all fixed points. And so here we have uh, still some examples, right? So first, a very famous fixed point is the Henkin fixed point, right? So if we go back to, So the whole thing, well, no, no, let, let's, let's move to the, to the end of my talk right here. So this is Leon Henkin. So he asked this kind of seemingly silly question. So what, what, is, uh, so what is the sentence that says of it itself that it's provable? Is that provable or refutable or independent or what, right? So uh, Leon Henkin asked this kind of seemingly irresponsible, crazy uh, question. And then George Kreisel, I don't have a photo of him, gave an answer that said, um, it depends. And uh, Kreisel's, uh, but, but then Loeb a year later came with his paper and in which he said, no, if under some natural conditions, and those are the Loeb conditions, uh, uh, we uh, have a unique solution and the Henkin sentence is true. And so the referee of Loeb's paper noted that the argument that Loeb gave, gave us also Loeb's principle. So, so Loeb's principle was implicit in what Loeb was doing, but it was the referee, the uh, who, who noted that the principle was there. And um, 
So later, much later, I asked Kreisel, so who was the referee, who was Loeb's referee? Right in the paper, Loeb thanks the referee for pointing out the principle. And then Loeb said, uh, Kreisel said, that must be Henkin. And so then I asked Henkin and he, he was still alive then and Henkin confirmed that he was the referee. So the, in some sense, Loeb's principle was found by Henkin. Okay, so that the Henkin sentence is a kind of great, great and important sentence. And now after all the work we've done, we can compute it. Well, it, it is of the form box H, right? It's a fixed point of a formula of the form box H. And so the solution should be box true, right? So the result of substituting true for the fixed point variable, and we are done, right? So it's box true, but box true is provably equivalent to true. So uh, the Henkin the Henkin fixed point is provable in the in the Loeb calculus and in in Loeb's logic, right? So there's a, it it is uniquely true. Okay, so that's that's a very famous fixed point, but there's an even more famous fixed point, uh, namely the second incompleteness theorem, or more precisely the calculation underlying the proof of the second. Uh, incompleteness theorem, right? So you can ask, so what is the Gödel fixed point gamma? Well, that is uh, uh, the fixed point of not box G. So what is the fixed point of not box G? Well, now we follow our algorithm, right? So what we do is we analyze this formula not box G and take the largest, take the uh, the component, the boxed component out. So that's box G. So we say G, if and only if not Q, so we replace not, bo uh, we replace box G by Q, and we restore the thing by saying Q is, of course, box G. Okay, now to solve this system, we first need to solve the first one. Uh, uh, sorry, there's a typo here. That should be, oh no. this should be G. So we have to solve G if and only if box not Q. So that doesn't do anything. So, um, oh no, sorry, I, I, it's not a typo. I, I only skipped a step. Apologies, right? So we have to solve, so we first solve this one. And the solution is simply not Q. Now we have to substitute the not Q here. And so then we have to solve Q if and only if box not Q. Now there was, so there was no typo. It's only that I skipped a step here. So this is indeed what we have to solve. And now this is of the right form, uh, of the form box something. And so I can solve that by, as we show, have shown, by substituting true, right? So the solution of for Q is box not true, which is box falsity. Now substitute the solution for Q again he, in here. So then you get not box falsity. And so the Gödel sentence is equivalent with not box falsity, which is the consistency statement, right? So, and hence, if, if the system does not prove the Gödel sentence, then it also doesn't prove the consistency statement because those are equivalent as we showed. So the, so the unique solution of the Gödel equation is in fact uh, in the modal logic explicitly not box falsity. And so that's the, the most famous fixed point. And so going back, right? So in fact, those two fixed points were the first fixed points that were explicitly calculated. And in fact, the whole idea that there's this kind of uh, unique calculation of the fixed points comes from these examples and people realized that this has a gigantic uh, generalization. Okay, so yeah, so th this is my talk for today. And so in the, uh, in the, uh, the, proof, the proof series seminar talk, I will show that uh, 
what happens in a world where we don't do not have the uh, the third lobe condition so that's uh, life without lobe three that's that's in fact one way of looking at the subject of my talk and it turns out that there's still a lot of life without lobe three and for example the uniqueness theorem still holds and we will see that the first part of this reduction still holds only the last this step goes uh, overboard uh, yeah and so uh, uh, yes some when in the, in the future i will give a second talk in wuhan and then i will explain the solovey solovey's uh, uh, arithmetical completeness theorem right so i haven't officially explained to you yet what all this has to do with arithmetic. So that's, that's of course an Im important step and I hope to uh, explain that uh, later. Okay, so here we see Leon Henkin uh, and um, in fact, so this talk was, def the talk Leon is giving here definitely was not, was probably in, in Berkeley but I have heard precisely this talk in Utrecht. So he, uh, he, he has given this talk uh, when he visited Utrecht about uh, induction. Okay, that's, uh, that's it. And so maybe we should still have some questions.